In continuation of my travelogue covering Bali, let me speak to you about their gods. In the earlier version, I spoke about how they revere our Hindu gods. In this part, it's all about their gods. Balinese gods are nothing different from our Indian gods. In fact, they are the same with similar names. Bali is called the island of gods and we can easily understand why. There are plenty of different gods in Balinese culture and religion. The three major ones being Brahma, Shiva and Vishnu. Deva Brahma is the god of knowledge, often painted in red in the temples of Bali. Deva Vishnu is the merciful protector of life. He opens the cycle of life with his wife, the goddess of fertility. At the other end of the cycle of life stands Deva Shiva, god of death and destruction. In Balinese culture, destruction also means cleaning and coming back to its state of origin. This closing of circle is very important in the religion where karma could be depicted as a wheel that turns and balances according to the good or bad deeds. Some secondary gods in Balinese culture, you will also find other popular gods such as the famous Garuda, the eagle, who gave his name to Indonesian airline company. Bali tourists will recognize him easily with his pointed beak, with teeth, large and magnificent wings and often mounted by Deva Vishnu. Another face that will soon be familiar to all Bali tourists in any temple is Boma. This god guards the entrance of all the temples in Bali or even the doors of houses. To say, if this large face with wide open mouth is smiling at Bali tourists or staring at them with a monstrous look. It probably depends on the hopeful, benevolent intentions that they bear while entering the temple in Bali. Now, let's talk about Deva Ganesha, the clever elephant-headed god. Balinese history of Lord Ganesha is the same as our mythology. He's supposed to be very sympathetic, highly educated. The Balinese ask Ganesha for their help to make the plans a success and he often protects the entrances of the islanders just like his mother's room back then. The goddess Devi Durga, as per Balinese mythology, Devi Durga is one of the manifestations of Shiva's wife Devi Parvati along with Devi Uma. When the god of destruction wanted to retreat for meditation, he asked Devi Uma to take care of his newborn son. When the child was injured, Devi Uma was gripped by tremendous thirst for blood and couldn't resist the overwhelming desire to lick the child's blood and devour the baby. When Shiva learned of her deed, he turned the beautiful Devi Uma into a demonic Devi Durga and ordered her from now on to guard the cemeteries. Thus, the mother of God, the goddess of light and beauty became the goddess of death. In her form as a black witch Rangda, she brings disease, illness and death to the living. In addition to these two manifestations, Devi Parvati can manifest herself into the most horrible and cruel of all deities, Devi Kali. Devi Durga is often depicted as a ten-armed creature, but even more often as a child devouring Shoa figure with claw-like fingernails, long hanging tongue and unspeakably hanging breasts. Their worship takes place in Pura Dalim, Devi Danu is the goddess of water, lakes and rivers like goddess Ganga in Indian mythology. It feeds the fields with life-giving water. From the springs of Danubartan, their residence, water is extracted, which is transformed into a tirtha, important for many ceremonies. In the Pura Ulun, Danubartan, she is revered by all Balinese. Well, that was all about Devi and her manifestations. It was quite an exhilarating stuff to talk about the female deity. In our last episode, I will talk to you about the offerings given to gods. Till then, stay tuned.